Welcome back to Teresa's Dead. My name is Teresa and I'm very much alive. I am an awful garbage filthy mouth, so viewer discretion is advised. But if you're not into that or weird shit in general, this is definitely not the place for you. Feel free to exit the video here. No harm, no foul, but I'll remember our time fondly. Welcome to New Makeup Nonsense Bingo. I wish I could say that was a bit, but it's not the amount of uncertainty I get when I say the title of this video. Hi, welcome. Oh my goodness. Happy Monday, y'all. Even though I'm filming this on the weekend, we're going to do a little bit of a daylight drinking. You see that's daylight over there because you know, what else am I going to do on a Saturday? Okay. Anyway, welcome to New Makeup Nonsense Bingo, where the fun never ends. If you've never been here before, well, you're in for a treat. This video was crafted and created by the wonderful, the beautiful, the... I was about to say Emily Hanhan of Emily Hanhan. <laughs> I have not started drinking, but Emily Hanhan! Emily created this beautiful, wonderful idea, and I'm just writing her a little mere coattails. Essentially, this is a new makeup release video, except we comb through Instagram, take a bunch of the makeup products, put them in a folder, use a random number generator, and pull the images as if we are playing bingo. Besides Emily and I, Audra from Audra at Home, this adorable little peanut over here, also plays with us. So I definitely invite you to go check them out. Everything you need to know will be listed in the description box below, along with how to play the game if you're ever interested in doing so yourself. There's a community playlist and there's quite a few of you that play and it's really adorable and I love it every second of it. So keep playing. It's so much fun to just get wrecked. <laughs> <sighs> but also keep in mind you don't have to partake in adult libations. You can do whatever you want to do. In moderation, of course. Any whoosies, before I get into what I'm drinking today, here are the possible makeup products that I may or may not be talking about. Here's my bingo card. And without further motherfucking ado, welcome to New Makeup Nonsense Bingo, y'all. Cheers. Ooh, that's tart. That's tart. <laughs> Today I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to go with a Starbucks refresher and Tito's. <laughs> and you know what? I need energy and I need to be a fool all at the same time. And that's why I love this little concoction. Also, you're going to hear the wind howling. It's daytime, but where I live, apparently there's a vortex of wind. Sounds like it's a fucking stormy winter day, okay? <laughs> the fucking strangest thing. It's so loud that every time I open the window, I expect to see a cow funneling into the fucking sky. Never happens. And I hope to God that it never happens. Knock on this table. Any hoosies. We have some good makeup stuff to talk about. A lot of it's just... I don't know. A lot of it's I don't know. I feel like this should be called I don't know episode, which I believe today is episode 50. That's wild. That's bananas. I, I can't even fathom that I've been acting like a fool on the internet for so long. <sighs> Memories. Anyway, let's talk about some awful makeup that you don't really need to buy. But before I do that, I am an old lady and I need to put on my glasses because I can't see shit. So let's see. I have my trusty little baby iPad down here that looks dirty and disgusting. Again, fuck you if you're judging me. I have my phone over here and let's come through the internet and see what horrible makeup products they decided to bestow upon the world to make people buy them because they're garbage and nobody needs to buy them. All right. Anyway. Okay, so the first one we have 
It's from good old daddy ColourPop. Welcome back, baby. All right, so ColourPop is coming out with the Let's Roll collection. Okay. <laughs> What the fuck do you want me to say about this? I don't fucking know. All right, so there's um an eyeshadow palette. Okay, it's 16 bucks. You have three Super Shock blushes for eight bucks a piece. Two Super Shock duo, Super Shock duos for ten dollars. Three So Juicy plumping lip gloss, eight bucks a piece. Two face crystals, which are seven dollars a piece. Soul Dry shimmering oil. The mini is 10 bucks. The shimmering powder mini is 12 bucks. The So Juicy sets 21. The SSS do it. What the? There's just so many S's. Anyway, that's 18 bucks, and then you can get the full collection for $110. Um. <sighs> just like, I don't know what the fuck this is. Wait a second. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. There is drama about this? What the fuck? Okay, apparently, like, this is like this whole big comment. Okay, so there's a person named Brittany that's the designer of the collection, and they left this very long comment about bold accusations and her representation. Uh, what the fuck? Wait, <laughs> hold on a second. Let me read this. This is. What? I think it's time for me to comment since Revolting knew who will make her statement I will. Nothing was stolen. The project was in the works before she even interviewed. She did not suggest a concept regardless of the process of color pop in this music community. Correct herself and also understand the bold accusations she's making and the harm she's done to not only my reputation, but the reputation of a wonderful company who has done nothing but take care of their employees. Had she been hired, she would have known that. But since she wasn't, it's understandable why her ego would be bruised. Not about her mood board. When you use photographs you create, you didn't take the fonts, you didn't create the- Oh! Okay. And then claim you're an artist being ripped off. <gasps> what? Oh my goodness. All while repurposing other people's work is harmful to the artist community and discredits herself to the designer. I mean, that is very true, yeah. Her lack of knowledge in the industry, design experience, and lack of control of her own emotions ruins the relationships big companies have with freelancers. Now, many designers and future designers will suffer. I advise her and all of you to do your own research on how the beauty industry timelines work and what truly goes into work with a graphic designer as a package designer before you defend frivolous accusations. I've done keeping quiet and defend my work and reputation as well as ColourPop. I hope you still support this wonderful brand and enjoy the collections we work so hard for all you to enjoy. That was a mouthful. Whoa. Okay. You know what? I'm not gonna lie. Now the collection got like a hundred percent more interesting. <laughs> I was gonna say like, okay, like yeah, it's a fine collection. You know, whatever. I don't really know what you want me to say about this. The color story is fine. The packaging is cute. Do you need it? Nah, eh, not really. How often are you gonna touch it? Meh. You know, I feel like it's kind of like a flavor of the week palette. Like, eh, okay. Um, but definitely the actual design of the palette I feel like definitely boosts what the contents are right if that makes sense yeah that makes sense no I make sense yeah I make sense anyway kind of when looking at this now I'm like oh bitch I do love me a good drama I don't want to be a part of it but I definitely want to be the bitch eating the popcorn watching everything go down so that is very fascinating okay so I guess there was some sort of comment at one point about someone stealing something and then the other person shut them the fuck down <laughs> Either way, this made it 127,000% more interesting. Will I buy it? No. I don't see a need to have this. It, it doesn't really do anything for my, you know, makeup dick. It's, uh, it's not even getting a chub. You know what I mean? I don't really have much to say except it just feels like something I've already seen from ColourPop. It is pretty though. Like, it is pretty, but it's not necessarily something that I need. Although, I say this now, but then I see this one color called Quad that looks like a nice, nice silver, but it's not technically Tin Man Dick. So, I almost got a chub for a second, but I'm gonna have to delightfully decline on this one because it's just not something that I need in my collection. It's cute though. That's cute, eh, whatever. Anyway, so with that said, we're gonna call this color pop, and holy shit, that dra I did not see that drama happening. All right. Uh, if you want to know more about it, go to Trend Moods Instagram. You could find the whole comment. You obviously read stuff for yourself. I personally have not heard anything about this up until literally looking at this fucking photo. Hence my honest reaction to be like, okay. So, okay. We're just going to keep on keeping on. But, um, wow. It definitely made it that much more interesting. I will say that. <laughs> Next. Okay, listen, all right? 
If you haven't seen my last video, I'll link it in the corner where I talk about some embarrassing, embarrassing makeup purchases because your bitch right here is a motherfucking clown. That said, did I buy this? Yes, I bought this. <laughs> Do I talk shit on the regular about them? Absolutely, okay? I am not the biggest fan of Makeup Revolution. I'm just not. But when they released something of one of my, one of my favorite fucking things, and the way that Simpsons have had such an impact on my fucking life. How do I not buy it? I understand the hypocrisy of everything. Like, don't think it's it doesn't go unnoticed, okay? <laughs> like, I realize how much of a fucking idiot I am, okay? And that's why I appreciate y'all joining me for the ride. Just to see how fucking stupid I am. But with that said, um... I did buy this. A review is coming because there was a lot of clown emojis that wanted to see this bullshit. So I'm gonna do a fun size Friday between this and I finally got my motherfucking elf order and only took fucking nine years because a carrier pigeon from DHL decided to drop it off. But that said, um, expect a fun size Friday with uh, both collections. I will leave you with this because I haven't tried everything from Makeup Revolution yet. But this highlighter, okay. Take the glasses off for a second and you see this bitch. Not going to say that she's amazing, but she low-key is kind of amazing. <laughs> so if you want to pick up anything from this collection as of right now, highly recommend the highlighter because this fucking, this is, it's good. It's good. I know I am such a fucking asshole. I know I am. But I'm always down to tell you when something's really good or something shit. And usually most of the time I dog the fuck out of this brand, but like this is like literally... My makeup dick is like soaring, okay? It's, it's, it's fucking three counties over. <laughs> like, it's just, it's good. It's good. I love it. Can't believe what I'm fucking saying. Have not tried the rest of the shit, but I can firmly say that this is motherfucking blinding and it's such a pretty light gold highlighter. F what is 2022, okay? Like, what the fuck is my life? So normally I would call this like makeup revolution go away, but we're gonna call it already bought it. Cause I already bought it and I'm not that mad about this, okay? Like I'm actually pretty happy about this. So I'm gonna shut my mouth and I'm gonna hang my head in silence. <laughs> oh, it's good. Go get it. It's good. It's fucking good. All right, we're gonna keep on keeping on. Next. Oh, look, it's Dior. Okay, I don't even know why I did that. I'm so <laughs> Today is just one of those, it's, you know what it is? It's daytime drinking. All right, so when it's daytime drinking, weird shit comes out. Mm. Okay, so here's a couple of things. Dior is coming out with their Forever Natural Bronze in the, uh, I think it's called the Dio Rivera, Rivera, Rivera. I don't even know what happened. I don't even know. <laughs> when I said that. Dior Riviera. Dior Riviera. Why is this so difficult? All right, Dior Riviera. <laughs> like, it should be Dior Riviera. Dior Riviera. Like, I sound like I'm slurring, and I'm not, because I am not drunk. Actually, you know what it fucking sounds like? It sounds like someone is pausing me or slow-moing me as I say, Dior Riviera. <laughs> like that's what it feels like. I'm just gonna keep drinking. Mm. Anyway, so their new Dior Riviera. Dior Riviera. It just sounds stupid. It sounds stupid when I say it. I should call Michelle. <laughs> Hey, how do you say this? And then she can school me. That's what I should be doing. Instead, I'm going to sound like I'm on fucking slow-mo. All right. Anyway, so this is actually available right now. There is a natural bronze. Now, I'm kind of confused. I don't know if this is necessarily a new color or an existing color. So I'm not quite sure because um, there's nothing really in the description of it. But it looks very similar to the bronzers that they already have in their collection. Has that same like white patent leather packaging, which I think is really cute, except the pan embossing kind of resembles like the book tote from Dior, which low key, I kind of really like. It's stupid because it looks like a Trader Joe's bag, <laughs> like an expensive Trader Joe's bag, but it's kind of cute though in a weird, ugly kind of way. And I like the pan embossing on this one. 
So you get that. Then there's also a lip glow oil, which I'm gonna I'm gonna stop right here. I'm gonna do a PSA for lip oils. First of all, I have never tried a lip oil up until this year. And the first lip oil I've ever purchased was actually from Dior. So I wanna say like maybe a couple of weeks ago, Dior came out with two highlighters also a similar packaging to this one and now i can no longer find them so i think they were just out for a second and they're gone i purchased them on the dior website got both of them love them they're not my favorite dior highlighters but they're really fucking good but i don't know if they're necessarily worth the high price tag that said i also got a lip oil when i tell you oh i don't even have it on me it's it's at my work desk the lip oil is like this big i probably used a quarter of it already i haven't even had it that long that is how often i use the product it is fucking good it is so good good it's stupid good i don't understand it i've always been a chapstick girl okay like i love my chapstick this though is like on another fucking level i don't like pairing it with anything i feel like it kind of looks a little bit weird if you use it with lip liner i don't know i just I haven't found a proper way to use it other than on its own on its own i have never had something last that goddamn long had my lips so hydrated so comfortable it's not super sticky it's just comfortable and hydrating and lovely and beautiful and it has like a nice little tint to it fucking phenomenal so all that to say, Lunar Beauty just released some of their lip oils. These are fucking fantastic. A review will be coming out shortly about these, but I'm just like now obsessed with lip oils. Like give me every fucking lip oil known to man. I want it all over my body. It's like, I just, I don't know, discovered cake for the first time. <laughs> like, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> this is amazing. Lip oils are everything. All right, let me get off my soapbox now. That said, um, <laughs> This bronzer, I mean, I'm kind of confused about the color because again, I don't know if this is like a new thing or an existing thing. Also kind of sucks when they just release like one shade as like a universal shade. Cause even if it is buildable, it's never gonna be deep enough for some people, right? Or it might be too dark for someone who has like uncooked chicken skin. So it's like, you can never win. I feel like this probably looks very well with like maybe light to medium skin tones. Anything darker than that or anything lighter than that can go fuck themselves because you're not gonna find anything. That's the only thing I really don't like when they do those releases. But it's also kind of unclear if this is something that already exists. Cause if it's something that already exists, like do you really necessarily need this? No, not really. So, eh, whatever. I just, I think it's cute, but I think I'm more like obsessed with the lip oil. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Fuck me up with that lip oil. Anyway, for this one, we're gonna call it Pretty Embossing Basic Makeup because eh, I think the Dior bronzer's okay. Is it life-changing? No, if you want a luxury bronzer, I feel like the best one is Tom Ford, which kind of scares me a little bit because I think they're either, I don't know if they're discontinuing it or what, but they used to have a big one or a small one. And I find now that you cannot find the bigger one anywhere. You can find the smaller one, but it's often like one shade. So I really hope if they do like repackage them, they don't fuck with the formula because it's just, it's such a good bronzer. Like that's the best luxury bronzer I, I, I feel like I own besides Chantecaille. Chantecaille is another one that's really, really good too. I don't know. I think, you know, if you're going to get something like from Dior, their lip oils, yes, absolutely. But I would stick with their highlighters. I feel like their highlighters are much more interesting than the bronzer. But anyway, yeah, we're gonna call this pretty embossing basic makeup, but uh, fucking lip oils. I like, I don't like, they're like the, the it product for me right now. It's the weirdest thing, but I can't stop fucking with them, which sounded really weird when I said that out loud, but. <laughs> Here we are, <laughs> next. I don't know how I feel about this. So Pat McGrath is coming out with, I, I hate I hate the packaging. I hate the packaging so much. It's weird. I like the box. I don't like the label. It looks kind of cheap. And I can't even imagine how much this is. Anyway, so Pat McGrath is coming out with skincare, starting with the Divine Skin Rose 001, the essence, because fucking Pat cannot get away from anything rosy or pinky, like here we are. So basically, this transformative secret to hydrated, revitalized, and luminous skin. The essence is formulated with 97% botanically derived ingredients that transform skin in an instant and deliver even more major results over time. Rose Biotic, pink liquid, calms, rebounds, and fortifies skin barrier. And then there's a hydrosphere, white liquid that nourishes, softens, and deeply hydrates. So wait, I'm confused. <laughs> Is there two products or one product? Is it one or two? <laughs> Help, I need an adult. I don't fucking understand what the fuck this means. Okay, 
it, uh, here's the thing. I often feel like skincare, I think I said this before, where I've never really liked um, skincare from a makeup company. So I'm like, I don't know, like I've never really found good results. There have been some, but most of the time I just, I don't know, I, I, skincare is so personal. Does that make sense? Yes, it does make sense. Skincare is so personal for you. And I don't know, like I feel like it's much, I don't know, like harder to find something that I really want to try because I have such sensitive skin. I often break out from a lot of things. So it's like, I'm very, I guess I'm more choosy when it comes to skincare stuff. And I, I, what it sounds like sounds okay, but like, I don't necessarily think that this is going to be the thing that's going to turn back the hands of time and make me feel like I'm in 2003. You know, like, I don't know, like there it's, it sounds okay, but it doesn't sound like something that I don't already have in some form of other skincare product. I don't know, like I have, and maybe this is just me being like completely like fucking clueless because like I'm just, I'm getting into skincare. I know what I like, but there are several different like subcategories, right? So you have like your toners and then the essences, and then you have serums and moisturizers and then masks and overnight masks. There's so much fucking in, in the skincare world. You think makeup's bad. It's like skincare, it's like that much more worse, I feel like. And I really applaud brands when they make their products make sense so like I love when things are <laughs> when things are numbered because I feel like okay well when is the essence supposed to go on from the toner and or like the serum you know what I mean like I get kind of really fucking confused so I don't know I feel like this product is like okay but I just don't I don't know, it's like not the most exciting skincare product. Maybe I'm alone on this one because I'm sure there's a lot of people that love essences and understand uh, what essence does for people. I guess I just don't know the difference. <laughs> like I just, I don't know. I don't know. I think I need to talk to a Welsh. <laughs> I need to talk to a Welsh brother stat. Like, sir, can you please explain to me, like, why I should care about essences? Because, like, I have some, but, like, I don't really know what to do with them. Like, help me, please. Anybody help me. I don't know what the fuck this is. <sighs> I don't know. So part of my brain is like over there, not understanding what the fuck this product is. But then the other part of me is like, Ugh, if it smells like roses, I just think of like funeral home vagina and I just don't fucking want it. I don't want it. I don't want it. Mm. Rose has, or like floral stuff. Sometimes like I don't have the best sense of smell, but when something is too florally and too perfumey, it hits me in a way that like it goes straight to my brain and I feel like I'm about to like just pass out. And that's like what I'm, I don't know, like even though I have no idea what the fuck this shit smells like, it could have no smell at all. Just judging by the fucking packaging and the fact that it's rose, literally it's all I'm thinking about is some sort of like funeral vagina smell and I'm not here for that. So. Yeah, this is not really doing anything for me. I am interested to see reviews on it because I kind of want to see, I don't know, like, is this a really smart move to go into skincare or should Pat stick with makeup? I don't know. I'm kind of intrigued to see how this plays out, so. Eh. But yeah, it's a no for me. I don't know. Mm. I feel like also I'm the only one that doesn't like the packaging. A lot of people were like, oh my God, the packaging's great. I think the box is nice. Although the picture of the rose is kind of weird. It's kind of oddly sexual too, a little bit. But I just don't like the actual like label on the pink bottle. It just, I feel like it cheapens it a little bit. Like I almost wish it didn't have the sticker and probably who knows how much this fucking thing costs. But I almost wish it was like maybe etched on the bottle as opposed to just like a fucking sticker that, <laughs> knowing my luck, if I did purchase it, it would be fucking askew. So <laughs> no thank you, but I don't know. I'm kind of intrigued to know what other people think about this, but it's a no for me. So we're gonna be nice, we're gonna call this even more skincare, and uh, we're gonna see how this fucking plays out. Next. So the next product is from Danessa Myricks, and I'm a little confused on what it is. So this is the Blurring Balm Powder. It's a texture reducing, coverage boosting blurring balm that balances oils throughout the day while maintaining hydration. So there are 11 shades within this product. There's one that's a universal shade and it's a flashback free shade that primes, blurs, and sets. And then you have 10 tinted shades that do the same thing, except it's tinted to your skin color. Now, the shades are kind of interesting. I feel like maybe one could work for me. I don't necessarily know if two would be able to work for me. I think one could potentially work for me, but maybe 
the universal one would probably be the best one for me. I don't know. But here's the thing. This is what I don't understand. It's like you could do so many things with this fucking product. So you can use it to prime, to highlight, contour, or to set or be worn alone. That's like every fucking makeup product. I don't know. It's like everything you ever wanted to be in one product. It's weird. It blurs pores, texture, fine lines. It's easy sheer coverage. It's a petal-like texture that feels like a bomb, but sets like a powder. Natural matte finish, balances oil all day. Uh, it's formulated with hyaluronic acid, vegan squalene oil, free of fragrance, which is good, parabens. Clean formula works seamlessly with the rest of the Yummy Collection, which Yummy Collection is kind of, eh, it's like, it's, it's, and it also comes with a little spatula. So it kind of reminds me of Tatcha Silk Canvas in a way, except it seems like it can do so much more than that product. I'm intrigued because I don't really know what or how I should use it. But what I do find helpful is that there is a little chart to this. So it shows like how to prime your eyes, how to highlight and contour, like how to set your foundation, or if you want to for sheer coverage, or if you want to set and add coverage. So at least it's giving you plenty of instructions to figure out what you should be fucking doing with this product. But I guess I just don't understand it. And I am one of those bitches that needs to fucking see it. I could read it till the cows come home. It doesn't mean anything to me. I need to see you actually physically do it and then it clicks. So I am waiting for reviews on this because I want to see how people play with it because I feel like it's just one of those products that I'm going to get and just not understand how to fucking use it and then get very frustrated thinking like, oh, this is a shit product. Meanwhile, I'm the one that's fucking it up. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I kind of like, I want to try it kind of for science purposes, <laughs> but at the same time, I think about the yummy skin line and mm, it was okay. Like I definitely like the foundation, but for if I was going to use it on camera, I didn't really find a great use for it if I went outside with it. But like if I'm home filming, I'm totally cool with it. I did like the primer. So maybe it's kind of like the primer. And in that case, I'm kind of more open to using it. But I don't know. Like it's, a, it's an interesting product, but it's a product that I just don't fucking have any idea how to use it, even though I'm reading instructions on how to use it. Does that make sense? I feel like that was a mouthful and I talked in circles. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, so I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. So I'm going to try this for science purposes. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, I feel good about that. It sounds cool. It just sounds like there's so many things you could fucking do with that. I just hope it's more user friendly than I think it is. Cause right now it doesn't feel like it's user friendly, but maybe it is. And I'm just overthinking it. It's probably because I'm overthinking it. Yeah, I'm overthinking it. Okay. <laughs> Anyway, we're gonna call this, um, hmm, what can we call this? I'm buying it for science because you know what? This is a fucking science project that I need to try. Next. Oh, bitch. Okay, so Jaclyn Cosmetics is coming out with the Mother's Day Jaclyn X Robin collection. Oh, man. I guess it's the Luxe Luxury Collection. Oof, all right. You have an eyeshadow palette, which is 20 pan eyeshadow palette for $49. The first base eyeshadow primer for 20 bucks. Inline eyeliner pencils, four shades for $18. All set setting spray, 28 bucks. Powder move loose setting powder in six shades for 30 bucks. Pout spoken liquid lipsticks, $20. The matching lip liners, 18 bucks. And then the Dear Mom eyeshadow palette. Wait, what? Dear Mom eyeshadow palette, 20 pans, $49. It's a personal touch of Jacqueline and Robin design. Packaging exclusive on their site. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So I guess you can get a normal palette with just Jacqueline Cosmetics, or you can get a picture of her and her mom on the palette. That's weird. <laughs> I don't want that. I don't want that. I don't really don't like when brand owners are just on palettes. You know, like even Huda Beauty is like, like I'm I'm all set, hon. <laughs> like just fucking give me somebody else. But okay, I mean if you want it, it's there for you. Interesting. <sighs> Here's the thing. Um, tipsy me right now. Um, I think I'm maybe getting a little bit of like the vodka goggles, you know, because it doesn't look so bad. This collection doesn't look so bad. It seems somehow familiar like it kind of reminds me of like the Viseart was it like the nat the neutral mattes palette or whatever or the warm tone mattes kind of reminds me a little bit of that a little bit but then I'm kind of confused because I've seen multiple pictures of this palette and I think the ones on trend mood are not the best they look kind of grainy they look a little like chalky and washed out but then I've seen other things where it's actually much more vibrant but not really it's like muted but it doesn't look chalky like it does in this picture so I'm kind of intrigued because you know, yeah, listen, y'all know me, y'all know I'm a basic ass bitch, that I love basic ass shit, and I kinda, again, why not just try it for science purposes? 
<clears throat> I know I'm a glutton for punishment because I feel like everything that I have tried from the brand, it's like I'm chasing my white whale. You know what I mean? <laughs> Like I love, love, love the highlighter palette that was released back in 2019. One of my favorite things that I have in my collection. And I would genuinely be upset if I ever lost it because that's how much I love it. Every other product I have purchased from the brand has never lived up to that product. And I think that's why I'm like always so fucking lukewarm about these collections, but I kind of want the fucking palette. I just don't want a picture of her and her mom. No shame to them. I just don't want a picture of your face or your mom's face. Like I just, I'm, I'm all set. I'm all set. <laughs> like I have a very strong relationship with my mom and even I don't want a fucking picture of me and her on a palette. Like, <laughs> like no, I don't want them. And she would say the same fucking thing. She'd be like, why do I, why? Why would I want my fucking face on that? So I'm like, absolutely. That said, I'm probably gonna be picking up some of this stuff, but I know Drunk Me would totally pick up the whole fucking collection even though I don't want everything because that's how Drunk Me operates. But I'm definitely interested in the palette because I do love a good basic bitch palette. I'm probably interested in the powder Actually, wait, is, does this actually exist? Okay, I was a little confused because I thought that the loose setting powder was something that she already came out with, but I guess not. I guess those powders are under eye powders. Because I know I picked up a couple of powders from this brand in the past. And there was one that I actually repurchased twice because I didn't like it for the under eyes, but I actually liked it for setting the face. Uh, I think it was like the pink one. That one was actually pretty good. Um, so I'm kind of intrigued to try the loose setting powder, the lipsticks. No, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to politely decline those. I don't want those. And the eyeshadow primer, I really don't give a fuck about, but I might pick up a pencil, an eyeliner pencil just to try it. And I really want to try the all set setting spray. That sounds like it could be fun. Could be fun. What the fuck? Who the fuck am I? <laughs> could be fun. So I don't know. So maybe, yeah, I am going to pick up some of these things. I'm just not going to pick up the whole thing because I just don't see the need in it. But actually, you know, the more I look at it, it kind of looks a little bit like Lorac a little bit. Good old Carol. You know, I don't know. It looks familiar. It looks really familiar. Now the more that I'm like letting it like marinate in my brain, this looks very, very familiar. It looks like a cross between Viziar and Lorac. 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 <laughs> Sorry, it's the fucking Tito's that's starting to really get to me. So what should I call this actually? Because I was kind of all set calling it Drunk Me Would Buy This because Drunk Me Would Buy This. But technically Sober Me is going to be purchasing this. But it kind of feels like a little bit of a copycat in a way, huh? So maybe we'll call this a copycat because it just kind of has the same vibe as Lorac. Lorac? Why am I saying it weird? Lorac? Lorac, Lorac, and Viziart. Let's call this major copycat vibes because I kind of feel like it's a little bit more of a copycat than say Drunk Me purchasing it because Sober Me is going to buy it. So let's call this a copycat and we're going to keep on keeping on. Next. I don't understand this. Okay, so <laughs> Huda Beauty is coming out with the Color Block Obsessions palette. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I definitely think, well, first of all, it kind of looks very similar to, wasn't it like a blue sapphire palette that kind of had like a yellow and blue and green moment to it? You know what I'm talking about? Was that one of them? I feel like there was a palette that looks kind of similar to this that I think was like, or was it Topaz? I don't fucking remember. Anyway, I feel like it kind of looks familiar to that, but also not at the same time. It's also intriguing that there is like a cake liner in this palette. So the palette has Matte Metallic's Dazzling Baked Flake, Baked Flake Shadows. What the fuck does that even mean? It sounds delicious though. And a water activated cake liner. Mm, 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 mm. I don't like cake liners. I just don't, I don't think they're that great. And then there's also a purple and orange version. So the blue, green, yellow one, that one I feel like makes more sense than say the purple and orange. The purple and orange I feel like is just a little too aggressive for me. <laughs> It's a little too much for me. And I'm a loud, annoying bitch. And um, I love purple. I love orange. Not together though. Not really. I think I would have liked this more if it was uh, like Beetlejuicy. <laughs> it was like green and purple. Then I'd be like, oh, I could fuck with that. Uh, but still, I don't think I would ever buy it. Also, these obsession palettes are usually fucking trash. So it's kind of another reason for me not to want to get these. But the more that I think about it, the more that I kind of want to try it. Again, for science. The, honestly, let's, let's rename this one let's try everything for science because there are so many weird things today that i don't quite understand how they work but i'm fucking intrigued to try you know what i mean anyways the color block stuff like
like I don't understand the split pan. I don't like split pan eyeshadows. I feel like it's just too fucking messy and weird. Like don't don't fuck with me like that. I rather you have two smaller pans next to each other than have something like a split like no. No. Fuck out of here. I don't want that. The cake liner People like cake liners. It's just I have very sensitive eyes and anything that's usually water activated is very hit or miss for me. So I feel like I have no hope when it comes to that. Um, but like the, at least the yellow and the green and the blue or whatever, it looks different enough. The purple and the orange, it looks the same. It looks like the, the fucking same. Even the orange and the purple split pan looks like the speckled egg shade. There's something weird about it. Also, it feels like a little bit NBA-ish to me. It must be like some fucking sports team's colors. It has to be like purple and orange. Cause it kind of feels a very like sports heavy to me too. Which I mean, I'm not a sports person, hence why I can't even say proper things about sports. Unless it comes to bowling, then I could fuck with it. But like, yeah, I just, I don't know. Like this collection is kind of weird. It's weird and it's funky. But also at the same time, it's interesting because it's different. Because this bitch always puts out the same shit over and over again. It's always some fucking variation of some weird pinky neutral bullshit palette, which don't get me wrong, the rose quartz is everything, or they'll come out with these disease looking T-virus pants. So I guess I should shut the fuck up because at least it's something different, but I don't know because this is all too much for me. <laughs> I feel like in ways this is an episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia and I'm Charlie with a bunch of fucking strings going across the room and being like, does this even exist? Like that's kind of how I feel when I look at this. Like I have a lot of emotions. <laughs> I just have a lot of feelings about it. And I kind of want to try it. <laughs> kind of want to try it now. So you know what? I'm going to keep drinking this. And at the end of the day, Let's see if I buy it. I will update you now as I'm editing if I purchase this. And that's what happens when you day drink, okay? You go into some weird time traveling bullshit and sometimes you buy color block palettes. That's all I'm gonna say. But if I do buy these, expect a review. <laughs> anyway, um, I think I might buy this. <laughs> Even though I'm about to have an aneurysm. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna call this Drunk Me Would Buy This because I think Drunk Me is gonna buy this. Next. All right, the next thing is, I just want this to end. I want this to end so badly. I hate this. <laughs> I hate this so <laughs> When, when, why? When did Friends get to be as big as, as this? I, every other fucking week, there's some sort of weird Friends collaboration, okay? Like, I thought it was enough with Makeup Revolution because there was at least, I don't know, 16 versions of the same fucking collection over and 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 over again, but it doesn't stop. I think this is like the third time or the fourth time that I've seen nail polish and it's never different. It's always the same Groundhog's Day bullshit. It's always the same fucking colors. It doesn't look that fucking unique. It's like, why? I'm so over this collaboration. It's a collaboration that won't die. And I don't understand like how many times can they actually fucking do this? Like I had enough. We all had enough. Collectively as the makeup community, we've all had enough. Please let this go. This is slowly becoming fucking Charlotte Tilbury's pillow talk, okay? This is the equivalent of orgasm. Enough's enough, bitch. I can't. So I'm gonna say no. <laughs> and I just, I'm just waiting for this to just be done. You know, like, okay, like you had your moment but now it's it's time, it's time. So that's a no for me. So we're gonna call this a collaboration, a product that won't die because this will never die. And um, this will haunt me until I die. <laughs> so it was nice knowing you. Next. So the next one is from Cleona and this is the Dragon Fruit Palette. Okay, so last time I believe I pulled this, we just talked about the highlighters and the brushes and whatever. And I was like, yep, totally on board, especially getting the highlighters because it just, first of all, they're fucking multi-chromes and yes, everything about it, I, I need to have it. And they're highlighters. Now there is a palette being released, which I think is really fucking cool. It's really cute, it's so pretty. I've seen a bunch of reviews on it already and now I'm like, yes, I need to fucking pick it up. So um, I don't really have anything funny to say about this except I really, really want this link. And um, so I'm definitely gonna be picking up when it's launched, which I believe it's launching at the end of this month, which is now. <laughs> it just like hit me that it's not, you know, fucking uh, April 11th. It's yeah, it's like the 23rd. <laughs> wow, okay, 
where the fuck has time gone? Okay, anyways, it's gonna be launching this week at 3 p.m. Eastern, 427, so if you are interested in getting it, definitely go check it out. I will try to pick up as much as humanly possible. There's also nail polishes that looks really cute too. I'm not heartbroken if I don't get them, you know what I mean? Like I think the things that I wanna focus on is the palette, cause it's really, really cute, and definitely the uh, two highlighters. Although the brush set is pretty fucking cute too. The whole thing is fucking cute. And again, congratulations to Emily because this is like a really cool fucking honor. And Cleona is just an awesome brand. So definitely expect a review on it whenever the fuck it arrives. We're gonna call this a food theme makeup item because um, I think it does a really good job representing a dragon fruit. So even though I've never actually ate a dragon, have I ever had a dragon fruit before? All right, let's call this a food theme makeup item, but I can't wait to definitely put this on my motherfucking face, but we're gonna call this a food theme makeup item. Next. I am very confused about this one. So our friends over at Hip Dot coming out <laughs> with another collaboration. And this one is with Jojo Siwa. So in this collection, you have two pigment and glitter palettes that are $18 a piece. And oh, and a lip trio for $20. <laughs> I'm confused because I don't, no, like, I, all right, so like when I think of Jojo Siwa, right, like I think of bows, I think of giant bows, and this is like, what, a couple years ago, right? Now I feel like her look is a little bit different now. I think it's still definitely is like kid friendly and all that shit, but like, I think bows. Like I don't necessarily think of like kind of fun, colorful, bright, glittery makeup. I don't really know much about Jojo Siwa except Jojo was adorable and that's it, right? That's literally all I fucking know. And I feel like in ways, you know, when I look at this and I'm like, okay, as an adult, do I want this? No, I'm not the core demographic for this, right? Like I got that. But I guess this is better than selling Claire's makeup to kids that can, you know, allegedly contain asbestos, Alleg allegedly allegedly it's weird right like i don't know like i feel weird about this whole thing like i don't really understand the collaboration because it's for me it's like someone not known for their makeup but also jojo's demographic is children so are children really wearing makeup i've seen plenty of kids around where i live none of them have fucking lipstick or glitter on <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Like, are kids really wearing makeup? Like, I, yeah, like, okay to, like, play around with stuff, but, like, I, I, I don't know. Like, I feel like this is just, like, such a fucking weird collaboration. But, of course, it has to be Hip Dot. That brand has to fucking put out all this weird shit. I don't know. It's really cute. The collection in itself is kind of really cute. It's done very nicely. Like, I like the little pan designs. I think the actual little palettes are cute. The color story is nice. Yes, there's pressed glitters that kind of suck, but other than that, like, the color stories are really fun. They're fun, they're poppy, and I could see them being more for kids, I guess, right? And even the lipsticks kind of have much more of a kid feel to them. But I guess I just don't understand, like, is this supposed to be for adults or is this really marketed at JoJo's fan base? Please let me know your thoughts down below because it's like, it's weird. Like, it's cute, but I don't know who this is for. Because if it's for someone in their 30s, no. <laughs> Politefully decline. Maybe I should call this episode I politefully I politefully <sighs> politely politely decline. Yo, that refresher's hitting on some different levels today. Woo, okay. Anyway, um, yeah, it's just a weird collaboration. Even when I zoom in, I think Jojo has some blush on, but like all I see is a bow. <laughs> like I don't fucking know. I don't know. <laughs> This is all too much. I've never felt old in my whole life. Like, no, no, I take that back. I, I feel old on a regular basis sometimes. But like, when I look at this, I'm like, I feel really old. Like, oh, I am just, I'm old. I'm old and I'm okay with that. So I'm gonna call this a collab with someone not known for their makeup. When I think of makeup, I don't think of Jojo Siwa at all. So anyway, we're gonna keep on keeping on. Next. Oh, what is this shit? Okay, so, oh, oh God. All right, so, Stila. Stila came out, st came out, uh, did you hear that? I had like a fucking weird British accent for a second there. Stila, 
Now I want to do it now. Estela came out with a sterile day dual ended liquid eyeliners. I am so sorry to my English babies. Okay. So they came out with these liquid eyeliners that retail for 30 bucks a piece. Wow. Okay. Features two shades, two finishes, and two tip applicators. Applicators. I can't fucking talk. <laughs> applicators. Hers. No, applicators. Applic if that's the word I'm looking for. From ultra thin precise lines to thick. All right. <laughs> seemed kind of aggressive trend move but all right so then you have four new shimmering and gl glue four new shimmer and glow liquid eyeshadows for 20 food dollars so you have dynamic dating whimsical courageous okay i'm just waiting for this brand to do something different <laughs> like they have been putting out the same shit since what, 2016, 2017? They're really just like pounding this into the ground. And I think, you know, when they came out with it at the time, yes, revolutionary. No one else was doing it. They cornered the market. Then other brands started doing liquid eyeshadows and all that stuff. They were doing a much better job than Stila and Stila just never fucking progressed after that. It's just like, I don't know what any of this is for. And I think this is all supposed to be for fest festival season. God, like this shit I feel like would have been so good in 2017 or like 28. No, 2017. Beyond that, it's like, nah, <laughs> just nah, <laughs> this is just not good. I don't know what the fuck this is. I don't even know anybody that buys anything from Stila. I just, if you buy from Stila, please let me know down below what's the product that you like. But I'm just trying to think like, I don't think I have purchased anything from Stila in a very long time. And I don't ever have a reason to because everything that they put out is kind of how you say, not good. <laughs> fucking mediocre at best and their price point I feel like is so high for something so mediocre like no 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 and you know what too for like the liquid liner portion it's like I applaud them I guess for doing something a little bit different because they're coming out with colors cool but also like for $30 like there are so many brands I feel like that are doing colorful liquid liner that are cheaper you know like I don't know, like there's just something about it just, just feels a little old to me, a little stale to me. I don't know. I just kind of feel like this is just so antiquated. <laughs> I don't know, like it just feels very, very stale. I don't like it. And to bring it back to like my, my original point about Urban Decay, you know, kind of having that same mentality of like they don't change since high school. Steela is definitely on that same train. And to that I say, she doesn't even go here, okay? This bitch doesn't go here. Festival makeup, what the fuck? No, <laughs> it's just a big old no for me, dog. Next. All right, so the next product we're gonna talk about Oh, bitch. Okay. I bought this. I bought this. So uh, we're going to welcome back our good old dad, Colourpop. Welcome back, our fearless leader. I love Disney, and my favorite character is Pooh. I love Pooh. I think he's just the most adorable little fat belly bear I've ever seen. Okay, I relate with him so much. I, too, get stuck in trees looking for honey, okay? And when this collection came out, everything about it is so adorable. It's so adorable. It makes me just want to just squeeze and just explode into confetti. That's how adorable this is. First of all, like what I'm like, first of all, like an old Italian grandmother. Okay. First of all, the eyeshadow palette is really cute. I think it's very soft. I think it's very pretty. Is it Pooh bears -y? Yes and no. I feel like it kind of could be, but like just like a pretty much run of the mill basic bitch neutral palette, which ugh, I love. The things though that I am like <sighs> about are the little honey pots. Even though I hate ColourPop's lip formula, I will make exceptions for that fucking lip scrub. Are you kidding me? I honestly don't even want to fucking use it. I don't even want to use it because that's how adorable it is. Oh my God, I fucking love it. But okay, so the palette's 18 bucks. It's as sweet as can be. Okay, like I'm about to cry. Then you get three super shock cheek. I think they're highlighters. So they're $10 a piece. Then you have the Just Taste of Honey Luxe Gloss Trio, $10 each for $27 for the set. And then the Honey Pot Lip Scrub and Mask Duo for $16. And it smells just like honey. So the PR box was 92. The full collection was 88 bucks. I wound up not getting the PR box. The PR box looked fine, but it was already sold out by the time that I fucking remembered that I had to order this. So I wound up getting the full collection, but... <sighs> 
how can I say no to this? Okay. <laughs> Like, I love it. I realize I dog color pop all the time because I think, you know, they just fucking, they don't stop. They come out with a lot of stuff constantly and a lot of it is like hit or miss, usually on the miss side, never on the hit side. Um, but every now and again, they fucking surprise me and they release something so fucking adorably delicious that I need to purchase. Do I have any expectations for this collection? Absolutely not, bitch. I don't. So if it's garbage, I'm okay with it. <laughs> made my peace with it because it's so cute okay like i'm not even lying how much i love winnie the pooh because i bought that spectrum collection that came out not that long ago and it was adorable and look i have the brush cleaner the little sponge i have the kabuki brush i have the other brushes and i just i cannot bring myself to fucking use this because i don't want to hurt it <laughs> Joe one do it's so it's so cute. So honestly, even if I don't even use the ColourPop stuff, God, I'm such an asshole. But if I don't, I'm okay with it because I kind of want to just like put it in the bag and just leave it be. <laughs> Sometimes brands get me and I feel like when it comes to the Simpsons, I'm gonna stop what I'm doing and, and pick it up. And when it comes to Winnie motherfucking Pooh, I'm gonna stop what I'm doing and pick it up. I know I hate me too. Ugh. Anyway, I can't wait to have it. So I did order it. When will it arrive? Who fucking knows, okay? Who knows? Which by the way, you wanna actually see some clown fucking purchases? These literally arrived the other day. I don't even like peeps, okay? But I couldn't, <laughs> the packaging fucking, it killed me and I was like, I need to have these. Do I have any intention to use them? Not really, although I'm really bummed out because I thought that this is actually gonna be silver, but it's white, so that kind of breaks my heart. But now I bought the whole collection because it's cute. The fuck is my life right now? I think it's because I'm gonna be turning 37 this year. I'm already having a another midlife crisis. <laughs> Some people buy Ferraris, other people buy Colourpop Peeps collection. Anyway, uh, we're gonna go. <laughs> We're gonna call this nostalgia because this, uh, when I think of Pooh, I think of my childhood and I always had this little Winnie the Pooh doll and I don't know, I just, I love, I love Winnie the Pooh. So anything that he's on, I'm gonna fucking buy. We're gonna call this nostalgia and we meet again and we're gonna keep on keeping on. Next. And there you have it. We have yet another makeup bingo in the books. So I feel like today's episode was filled with a lot of, I don't quite understand this, but I'm still gonna purchase it anyway energy. <laughs> down below how you feel about this makeup if you're gonna pick up any of it if you care if you don't care let me know because I love hearing from you oh and please let me know what essence is <laughs> explain to me all of that that would be great thank you and um, definitely go check out Emily and Audra's videos and tell them I said hi and of course uh, stay tuned for next Monday there's gonna be a new thing that we're gonna be doing the three of us will be doing and it's gonna be really fun so definitely be on lookout for next Monday's video just saying and uh, with that said, I'm gonna finish my drink and I'm gonna order that Huda Beauty palette. <laughs> Cause I cannot be stopped. Anyway, I wanna say thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it as always. Feel free to like, comment, hit that subscribe button three and hit that bell icon for notification of all my future posts. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Patreon. To all my beautiful, wonderful patron bubbies, thank you so much for keeping this delicious, disgusting, filthy, trashy, really trashy, really filthy, really gross, really nasty, really disgusting actually, but also fun. Garbage boat afloat, I couldn't do without you. I love your adorable little delicious faces and I just wanna gobble you all up. If you wanna know, ugh, what is currently i'm so sorry <laughs> i am so sorry but it just felt like it had to come out if you want to know what's currently on my face everything will be listed in the description box below and i'll see you little blueberries later bye